know about relationships, but you're wrong. Listen, there's no magic bullet. I'm teaching life skills. Yeah. When you sick, you need medicine. It don't always taste good. Oh, nah. But it'll get you better. You, you, you need this medicine. Yeah. It ain't gonna always taste good. But this is what you need. Men and women, bottom line, we need to have the conversation. Your partner wants to give up control, but only if you know how to drive. This is about being the best you you could ever be, whoever you are. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, LGBTQ, space alien. I'll save anybody. I don't care. I'll teach a hedgehog how to have a threesome. What do you mean by that? Look, you don't have to listen to me, but you're wrong. Listen, I know I'm great. And I know you're thinking, Dante, there's no way I could be like you. But you could be me, you know why? Because you know who I was before I was me? I was you. you. Man school, 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first because if you don't, they won't. GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Uh, Harry, what's going on, baby? You good? Of course I'm good. Why would you even ask me that? I'm sorry. Like that. Sorry, I didn't mean that. Damn well. I didn't, I didn't mean to be I'm disrespectful. Uh, Dre, what's up, Dre? You're yeah, shaking. I'm lit. You, you ready to go? Yeah. All right, all right. This is a special show tonight. I love how he tells us he's lit, as if that's different from other shows. He's like. Just so you know, guys, I'm lit. I'm lit already. <laughs> um, uh, this is a special show. And now I know I've said that 400 times before, but this time I mean it. Um, we have a special guest on. Uh, this is an, a kind of an answer to uh, we did a show with uh, Marnie the Wing Girl. And this is her podcast uh, co host and um, banter coach. Um, uh, Kristen Carney and stand-up comedian and all kinds of stuff. Um, I wanted to get her on here because uh, Marty recommended her, and I was like, I really dug her so much. Uh, give it up for Kristen Carney, y'all. Give it up for Kristen Carney. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. Hey, what's up? What's up, hey, Kristen? Thank you. Thanks for having me. No autographs, really, please. No, no, no problem. Um, just want to start off by saying uh, my condolences. I know you had a little loss, and I just wanted to make that clear that, you know, I, I really appreciate you doing the show in the context. I mean, you know, we, we text back and forth, but dope to have you on. Dope to have you on. Um, so this is interesting. I, I, didn't, I didn't really tell you guys this, but Kristen is a stand-up comedian, and she's been doing, I don't know if you would call it dating coach, date coaching or what or would you say go ahead would you tell me tell me what you do yeah to simplify it i'd say dating coach but really i help guys learn how to talk to women which i would have never in a million years thought i would do but it started out me doing this podcast with marnie the wing girl and i was in a relationship and once i got out of the relationship i'm doing stand-up and i realized when i was dating that guys didn't know how to flirt be funny, be witty. They were really boring. And so, you know, as a comedian, I'm I'm not full time comedian and or funny enough to be full time comedian. Mm. So, you know, you need an income, an income. So I was like, this is an opportunity. I wrote a guide for Marnie that she sold called how to banter, like a banter mm. guide. And once I did that, people started requesting one on one sessions with me. Mm -hmm. And it's just kind of become a business. It's become my my, you know, my my thing, which was totally unintentional because right. if I could, I'd choose to do nothing. But unfortunately, right. I have to do something. Right, so. right, right. Um, it's interesting because uh, it, it that's kind of how how I got into it myself. It was just it, which I which I because I, I'm I always say this and I said this to Marnie. Um, and this is why I'm, I'm really looking forward to talking to you on this because of the fact that I usually always say that I don't, I don't, I don't, that guys shouldn't take dating advice from women. One of the reasons why I say that is because 
uh, it's 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 always if you want to know how to hunt deer, you ask the hunter. You don't ask the deer. But Marnie had such a practical aspect. I mean, she, I, I I felt like she kind of moved herself out of herself and, and had the empathy to see it from the perspective uh, of uh, of what a guy does, which a lot of women don't have the ability to do that um, or, or don't have no have no need to. But I mean, I guess. You know, you were looking for a job. So, I mean, that's always a motivation to a certain extent. Yeah. Um, yeah. And let me ask you this. The, this banter guide that you wrote, I mean, or, or let, can we talk about that a little bit? Well, first of all, are you you in a relationship now or no? No. By choice. I could be. I could be. Of Everybody, course you oh, could. How, do you, teach, how I mean, do you teach dating if you don't have a boyfriend? I hate that. It's kind of like a thing. I could have a million boyfriends if I want. I just really well, you have a to- vagina, so it's not hard to get a it's right. really not hard to get a boyfriend. So that's not hard. right. Surprise, but, surprise. I do have a vagina. Unfortunately. I, I, I'm, I was hoping so I didn't get removed <laughs> in a horrible train accident. But um, <laughs> but um, no, I lost twenty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, you Andre, Andre won the Super Bowl pool. It's so, stuck up there. <laughs> but um what what are, and and you kind of incorporate what the principles from stand up or or what? Uh I really just incorporated what I saw growing up. So my dad is really funny. Mm. And and so I grew up listening to my dad just all he does is tell jokes. He doesn't really have serious conversations. Like my mom just passed away and he's still just telling jokes. I'm like, well, right. will it take you to shut the fuck up and actually right. talk to somebody. Right, so right, he's right. just a, a joke guy. But I noticed growing up, there was a formula almost to his jokes. And it was like he was making a connection or a correlation with one thing and another in an unexpected way. So I so I. And when I started writing this banter guide, I was trying to give step by step how to's and actually a formula. And so when I was thinking about how do you be witty, because it's not just how to banter, you have to be able to do everything. But if you want to banter successfully, you got to have some ability to be witty, to be fast on your feet. Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of dug into like what my dad did. And I just noticed that if you connect one thing with another, in, a, in an unexpected way, that's actually where the humor comes from. So like I so if a woman says that she's a dog mom, this is what it, this is an example. Girl says she's a dog mom. You do. I do this quick little brain scan. This is how I teach my guys. You do a quick brain scan of, of word associations you can make with mom. So, you know, you think of, um, you know, pregnancy, you think of breastfeeding. So, boom, there right there. I'm making connection between dog mom and breastfeeding. So if I were the guy, I would say to her, say to her something like, did you breastfeed or bottle? So okay. you're, so you're, you're able to have kind of these witty one liners with women. You're That's where fucking I dogs lady. That's what <laughs> you're fucking exactly, dogs? But, Damn. Give me right. your number. Right, but that's you know what? For Andre, that'll work. Andre, that might uh, work. <laughs> that when you're work that handsome, Andre. you don't need yeah. lines. Right. That's why Andre's uh, dialogue coaching and banter coaching is not it's successful horrible. at all. Yeah. <laughs> Use my package. Go to Kristen. Yeah, yeah. Andre be like, look at her dress and go, red. Are you blood or clips? <laughs> She like but that clip, works fool. in a way, in a way that works with the right delivery. It it can work, and you know, like Andre again, so handsome. You can have these kind of I bad. Vibes, not that handsome, okay? There's, there's Are you mad enough. at my friend? Enough, Andre? enough, enough. <laughs> Are you mad at my friend for? <laughs> Uh, what what's what's interesting is look I I you know that that's kind of a there was a book written years ago of how to do stand up and it was kind of that like you you kind of do these word associations and you link un unnatural you know on things that wouldn't link together but so how do you feel so is it is is what you teach Dante, just you the banter for a second yeah I'm Sorry. trying I'm trying to do it right now just zoom in yeah there you go um. What? Uh, so, how do you how do you perceive that that builds attraction, or is it just the fact that they're funny and that's the the lead up? Because what's interesting about that is uh, you can be funny. I know guys that are funny, but they don't. There's no there's no, there's no sexual banter. You know what I mean? There's no. So I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah. 
it doesn't need to be sexual banter, especially at the beginning. So women's right, initially. One. But how do you make that pivot? I mean, so. Yeah. So what you're talking about is a break. So so when you talk about pickup, you talk about the opening. You talk about the banter, which is is kind of playful and funny and kind of. But you do have to introduce a sexual element to it, because otherwise, then you're a guy who's who's a great friend. You know, like I always say that, it, you know, um, uh, the banter is where the attraction starts safety. And then after safety, the next step is seduction. But um, if you have banter, but there's no sexual pivot or, or there's no there's no there's no sexual line through, then, then you become her cousin. You, you become a friend, right? You end yeah. up in the friend zone. Which is and if great. you yeah. and if you have just the sexual pivot without the banter or without the safety, then you're a creep. Jail. Or yeah. You, yeah. you go to jail. <laughs> exactly. So there's a so how in your system, how do you how do you perceive that? Well, so my first gut instinct to respond to that is banter is attractive because a guy who can banter and who can be funny is presenting some sort of command of the language, intelligence, and right there, that's attractive to women. Sure. So women are much less literal than men are. So if you're being fun and playful, you're, and then, you know, like you said, the safe thing, safe is also part of it. If you're doing those things, the next step, which I know you probably would hate to hear this, should come naturally should be that more of a emotional connection. So you don't really need to have this, oh, I'm going to banter about getting dirt down and dirty later. It's that you're, you're being masculine in leading the conversation. Uh, you know, men used to lead and dance. Now we don't do that anymore. So when you lead in the conversation, so I teach guys how to lead the conversations, take it where they want to go. That's like leading and dance. So there's something naturally attractive about that to women so it's oh, not like you're, you're saying it's, it's not just the, the it's just the the taking control there's a masculinity in taking control but i i would i would say this i would i would push back on this that if you if you're leading that attraction and if you're leading look if there's a physical attraction then that's already there but there still has to be a a so the intention so women don't always assume that there's this sexual component unless you introduce the sexual component. Now, introducing the sexual component doesn't what I'm when I say that, I don't mean it on a blatant level. Right. You're not like, oh, right. I like to suck your tits or something like that. But there has to be a playful. <laughs> I, Again, it would work just fine if Andre. Yeah. If Andre would be fine Andre with that. Like yeah. suck your tits. Um <laughs> It's lit. I want to say it's lit. <laughs> so, um, it's lit. but there's a there's definitely a sexual, uh, but it's a it's a it's a it's a covert kind of perceived. There's a perceived sexuality going yeah, on. Yeah, there's a there's a teasing. If you can tease, I think then, and she's teasing back, or she's okay with it, and she's not pulling back, then she's giving you permission. To continue forward teasing i think is the key that's missing so banter can be just fun playful back and forth but in my opinion the teasing is what differentiates it from friend zone to going sexual the, oh, i mean i think i think the, the teasing the teasing without without comfort so you know one of the things that i constantly say is that you know that something that so, so something that guys don't consider is that every time a woman goes on a date or goes out with a guy, she has to consider whether you might rape her or kill her. Or, I mean, that's a that's a general consideration every time. And this is and I think sometimes guys don't have the empathy to understand that that is that's the bar that yeah. that you have to cross. And to not reach that bar is instantly you're doomed. Like if you, if you, if you, if there's a moment of this kind of creepiness and that all depends on how, how much attracted, how attracted she is because she would make more leeway depending on what the perceived value of the, of the guy is. So when you, when you say there's, it doesn't, that's just the banter. I don't, 
I, I, I mean, I, I think, yes, if the guy is handsome and there's already attraction, but if you're trying to build the attraction from the context. So, I mean, can you speak on that a little bit? Yeah, Go ahead. How, yeah. how would you say, Dre? No, I was saying that there's like a, a, a element maybe of perception, like where the maybe not even I'm thinking about in my myself, like I don't try to steer a conversation. This shit just happened. And then I see like little little areas of if I say this over there, that will turn into that conversation. If I say this over here, that will become that conversation. So like example, I remember this girl was telling me about like she was posting about being keto like Harry. Yeah. And I just be teasing people about the shit. So she mm. posted. I'm like, ah, that shit trash. And mm. then she's like defending her keto stance. Right. And then I explain a little bit of why I don't think is sensible. Mm -hmm. And then she's like, yeah, I'm doing this just because I want to get slim really quick. So when I get slim, like my slim pictures. Right. And then it came up that I liked her pictures beforehand, which is her saying that beforehand. Right. I wasn't sexually, I wasn't super attractive, mm -hmm. but I'm going to become super attractive. But in that- Wait, 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 say that again. Re so, rewind that a little bit. Yeah, so she's saying that, she's like, she said, like my slim pictures when they come because I'm uh -huh. going to get slim. Right. But in her saying that, it's saying that she didn't, she wasn't slim before, so those aren't the pictures to like. The okay. pictures to like are coming. But if I'm, if I feel like being that type of guy, I could be like, well, I liked you already. Right, the second right. I go into what already exists and already is, yeah, yeah, yeah. I could take it there, but I didn't mean right, it. right. But you're also going, I liked you already, which in itself is saying that you attract. Uh, I'm attracted to you. I was attracted to you in the first place. Yeah, which is like now you can almost make it two attractions because it's like you attractive then you're going to be attractive over there right blah, blah, right blah, blah, blah. but uh, but if but even that you know what i'm saying there's a that's a point it's not so i see i see what you're saying it's not like you're not trying to control it but it's sort of like a running back all of a sudden the the hole opens up on the field mm. and then you you go 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 and yeah, that and once you make the decision to go make the hole you but you got to make the hole go. what i'm interested in is when there is no hole like so are you hear women talk about this all the time but about it seems like there always is yeah but for you i know dudes that are i, I it's funny i just spoke to a guy a older guy today and he said to me he said to me, oh, so he saw my truck. I have a, so Kristen, I have a lifted Jeep and it's on 37 inch wheels and all. So he goes, oh, nice Jeep. He goes, yeah, I had a vet. He goes, I had a vet, but the girl I was dating, uh, she, he goes, uh, she, she didn't, she, she made me get rid of it. And as soon as I hear that, I go, he's already doomed. And he goes, oh, you know, what I mean, I had two little kids. So he starts to to pile on with these excuses why he got rid of the car. Now, I get that you have two little kids and you got a Corvette. You need two baby seats or whatever. It is. But the point is the fact that in the context of him saying she made me get rid of it. It, it there's a subtext in that in the fact that he doesn't feel in control of his of his own life that he's allowing this woman mm -hmm. to control his life and ultimately it's what you're saying is that this the, in the context of this banter he didn't even say i had to get rid of it he yes said, she said she made, she made me, me get rid of it right and i, I go why don't decision. you i i said then why don't you why don't you stick your hand in your pants and see if you got a dick or not and check your <laughs> check your driver's license because it doesn't seem like you're of age that you would <laughs> let somebody and I, and I and i'm not and i'm not saying that there's not a a conversation about the practicality but the 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 subtext there's always that subtext so andre like what you were saying is oh i liked you already is a subtext of okay this this is a sexual this is a flirtatious kind of sexual yeah, i was thing. just saying that i was saying that there's a possibility like in conversations because because she brought up the banter thing yeah yeah in in the banter you kind of see if you are looking to flirt you could see where you can flirt is what i was saying yeah i yeah i get it but you also yeah. with, as as a comic we're always looking for the funny always looking for it we're always like putting i actually these got to go i'm not even gonna go over there that's that's where it was right, like right, i saw right, the right. flirt i saw the flirt and i saw I'm the like, flirt over I got there a, i'm like i got I'm a girl in that direction nigga. right i got a girl <laughs> exactly 
<laughs> so, so, Kristen, what do you what do you think about that? In the fact that there is, I think that even when when there's not a um, wh- even when it's not overt, there still has to be that pivot where it becomes it becomes something. Do you do you understand what I mean? Yes, I know what you mean. It's like almost like there's a space missing. Like yeah. We're trying to fill in this gap of like, yeah. how does it go from one thing to the next? Right. Intuitively, like women are very intuitive. So, uh, there was a guy. I, I t- talked about this recently on a master class that I did with Marnie. There's a guy uh, who um, I matched with on Tinder and I don't, I don't go on Tinder much. This was a while ago. Mm. Um, and he was cute. I really liked his look. I like uh, physically, I was very attracted to his look. Mm-hmm. The minute we started talking, I was like, this guy is, is just like, it's a nothing there. no, it's nothing there. He had no personality. He was, placating me anything that I wanted to hear he was saying he was sending stupid memes and I just was like yeah. no I, I it does nothing for me so I actually and I don't normally do this but I said to him I do banter coaching because I don't put that in my profile so they don't know what they're getting into mm-hmm. and I said you're really cute but you're really really bad at mm-hmm. conversation so right. please let me help you Okay. And I thought I thought he'd have a little pushback of like, who do you think you are? And maybe it would bring out a little personality or something. Right, right, but, right. But he was really pleasant and really receptive. And I ended up not working with him, but we spent about an hour texting back and forth about how to be better in conversation mm. uh, and how to be funny. And in a lot of guys, they they placate women, and by that I mean they just whatever the woman wants to hear. Like, they lie. Andre- <laughs> right. Like if Andre, if Andre said something like he liked keto, that would be an example of what so many guys do. It's like, oh, the girl likes keto. I'm going to pretend I'm into keto. And they yeah. bend over to be this per- be this person for the girl. So with this guy, um, we ended up keeping in touch, but I had no sexual attraction to him. So that was about a year and a half ago. So well, you about- also don't want to train the dude. And then he's using your jams on you. And you're like, oh, I, <laughs> well, I taught you this. Oh, that oh, yeah. would be mad he funny did. if you oh, said, he did. A, uh, if you said uh, a sentence and then he <laughs> said the exact same <laughs> sentence back. But he started that, doing that. So right. he That's started flipping funny. the switch. He That's started flipping funny. the switch on me yeah. where, it, you know, time had passed. It wasn't an instant thing. Right, but right. he flipped this switch. And so I, I flipped the way I saw him because of the way he was communicating with me. He wasn't putting me on a pedestal. He was busting my balls a little bit. Mm -hmm. He was letting me know he wanted to still grab drinks. He was self-deprecating just a little, but not (laughs) enough because when you self-deprecate, you show you have confidence because I mean, so you can't put yourself down unless you've got some self-esteem to lay, lay on while you self-deprecate. So he started flipping the switch and I, and I, I'm not just saying this to say it, I genuinely saw him differently. Right. And I, I wrote to him <laughs> to see, like, to basically ask him out. And right. he, he had a girlfriend by the time right. I wrote to him. Wow. So, you know, so I, I blew that opportunity. That also but, might be why he why he had the confidence in the first place. It's like a lot of times men are men are as confident as their options. Right. So, you know, the more options that they have. But what I, what I think is interesting is that there's a you know, there's always this subtext that's going on. And I think um, I, I think a lot of times women don't understand that there's this subtext that's going on. I say this all the time. Um, if you meet somebody and you're talking to them, um, how do they know what your value is? Uh, only way they know it is by you telling them. So they, they don't know you. You've, you've known you for however many years you've been alive. You tell them what your value is. Now, if you sell that, if you package that in the wrong way, you, you're going to you're going to lose every time. Well, you can also demonstrate your value without having to say your value. Well, I, I, mean, well, I don't mean saying it at all. I mean, yeah. I think so. So it's funny when you say you're pandering, you know, a guy who panders or kind of, you know, just kind of placates. But so the principles that, you know, it's just truthfulness. It's honesty. So yes. the, the fact that you're dishonest is what is unattractive if, if you get caught being dishonest. Exactly. So women don't see that as masculine. You also no. show you don't have any value because if you did have value, you wouldn't have to change yourself to be right. something else. So it's like that's that kind of missing piece is this confidence where it's like a balance between masculine. It's like you're not being a jerk, 
You're just being masculine. It's like there's this area. I don't even know. I don't even know if it's it's that because I think even in 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 the context of um of um being a nice guy, it's still it's still attractive if the guy is is genuinely nice. The but being a nice guy doesn't mean that you let somebody walk all over you or say whatever they want to say or talk to you any right. any kind of way that you want that any kind that they want to. So the honesty of it is, um, you know, I say this all the time. If he, if a guy's lying, it's because he doesn't think that what he has is good enough. So if he's five four and he says I'm five, how tall are you? And he goes five five five. He it's because he thinks five four is not good enough. Right. And somehow in his weird, twisted mind, one inch makes me valid. One less in- inch, which nobody dates somebody simply on a, on the a difference of an inch, you know? Yeah. And let's be real. Five, four is really sh- short still or five, five. I mean, it's still um, really yeah, short. my dad was five, two and he <laughs> bagged my, my dad was five, two. He couldn't stop bagging chicks. Um, awesome. My mom thought about it all the time, <laughs> you know, like, but <laughs> but it was really a situation where his 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 confidence and his that he was such a dynamic person because of that. You can't. I mean, I, I get that there's a there's a, a situation where a girl would go, oh, uh, you know, height is important. That but, height shit fucked up, son, because there really there's women that this everybody got a, a height similar. You can find a person you five to four. You can find a girl that's five feet. Don't want the, your short ass. <laughs> that's so fucked up. But the She'd fact be a that midget are... and still be like, nah, son, I want a basketball player. <laughs> <laughs> but the fact that there are short people on this earth still means that Who's people it? are banging other short, short people. Somebody's fucking short people. Right. Uh, Brian Scalaro says, look, down to the pussy. Brian, Brian, Brian Scalaro used to say, I get laid all the time. I mean, look, we're not running out of fat people like fat people are <laughs> fucking. So right. We are. We're multiplying. So um, <laughs> literally, it, it, yeah, um, it's uh, it's an interesting. So the truth of it and, and that truth comes in different ways. Like I was coaching a dude and he was saying to me, he was saying to me, he met. He saw this girl on the on the train. And the girl was get, liked him. She liked him, you know, uh, you know, aesthetically, she liked him. And she was just he said to me, you know, she kept looking at me and she was really just giving me the go, uh, uh, the go ahead. But I he said I couldn't bring myself because she was stunning. And he goes, I just been there before. I, he's I just couldn't <laughs> bring myself to it. And then, you know, some of the things that I say all the time is that, you know, fear exists when you, for, fear exists where the opportunity presents itself and how long you take to access it the longer you take to access it the more the fear builds until it ultimately paralyzes you so what's interesting is he was he kept he man he goes she just she just kept oh she said she was just literally leaning against the door going like Hello, come on, it, you know, and he and he froze. And I said, do you understand that even if you had, you had went over to her and said, listen, I really feel like you're attractive and I feel like we got to we got to we, we have a bond, but I'm just you're so stunning that I'm almost afraid of the rejection stating the truth yeah. is attractive. Now, you can't you can't you can't you can't play that tune six times i'm also you know i want a hand job but i don't want to you can't keep i mean you, you it'll work once but it can't you can't keep you can't keep playing that tune you get to right. play it once and i and it's just when i said that to him he was like man that's that's perfect just being able to say just being able to be honest in the situation says that you're honest and honesty makes you feel safe so if there was an attraction already the fact that she feels safe this is already escalating exponentially already yeah i was just taping an episode with marnie about an hour before we got on and we had this guy robbie kramer on and he was talking about approaching women um and we got really into the idea of truth like Truth is truth is attractive. It's essentially calling out the elephant in the room. So he said he does this thing uh, when he approaches women and, you know, you've seen it before and and stuff, but he gave it a good name. He he said, I give them my play by play and his play by play is the truth, which was the example. The silly example he gave was like. Um, I was going to approach you, but I just ate a bunch of fish, so I didn't want to smell. So I went and got gum, and now here I am. Uh-huh. 
Right. So it's not smooth. There's nothing like cool about that, except but the, for the coolness fact that it's about truthful. is the fact that I feel I feel comfortable enough comfortable. that I, I don't really. This is what it is. You can take it or leave it, which is exactly. which is attractive. Exactly. So going with the truth is always going to be so much better than going with a lie or like a right. trying to be smooth guy who definitely yeah. isn't smooth guy. Yeah, That's, yeah you're better off going. That women way. read that incongruency. They can read the incongruency yeah. between what you're saying and who you are, even down to your to your 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 body posture. I, mean, I don't know if you know uh, the guy that everybody's ranting on the Internet, this guy, Kevin Samuels. But there's a he's a black dude who's just blowing up in the whole dating thing. But basically, he's just telling women he's he's running around telling women they're not good enough. You're too old. You're not slim enough. You're not this. You know, if you want a high value, man, you need to be this and you need to be. Sub but the but there's a thing where he he on his Instagram live, you he hooks up it's some some celebrity girl. Uh, from Love and Hip Hop comes on his live and then he goes out to, to, to L.A. to meet with her. And he he goes, he shows he's with her. It's kind of this whole thing. Look at me. Blah, I'm with this girl. But me that I've been doing this so long. And, I, you know, when you say the truth is I always say real game is no game. Like it, being yourself is 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 really the game. Getting to the point where you're honest enough to to not have game is really what the game is. The interesting thing about it is when I'm watching this guy, I'm watching his body language and he's taking this kind of video with her, but it's just very not, not and the girl is smoking hot. She's a smoke show. And he, he, he doesn't, he's not touching her. He's not bringing him to, and I'm, and then right away, I'm like, yo, oh, dude, you're, you're a fraud. You know, like this is fake. You're not really this guy who perceives this confidence and stuff. And it's funny because Marnie was saying that there's a lot of guys. I don't know if you went to if you how long have you been doing this? Two years, two years. So yeah. have you gone to the conference to pick up conferences and stuff like that? I went to one conference last year. The, like it's like the man, the man, something conference, man of spear or something like that. Something, something yeah. cheesy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And she was Marty was telling me there's so many guys that go up there and they give this great presentation. They give this great presentation. But then uh, when they come off the stage, they can't look at you in, the, in, in they can't even look in your eyes. Yes. Yes. Now, well, when I was with her last year, I experienced that. So we were at this. Oh, God, I wish I, I don't know how I forgot the name uh, of this man something conference. But it was like you could see the 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 effort some of these guys they looked all everyone was dressed great and it, it really when martin and i walked in there we both kind of went like whoa because they all these guys were dressed almost like it was like 1940 or 1950 where it was mm -hmm. like so put together and it was really really attractive right, from right. afar right, from afar right. but then once you got close to some of the some of the guys not all of them but once you got close to some of them you could tell they were overcompensating right. and they were really actually uncomfortable in their right. own skin Right, and right. and there's nothing more, I guess, deflating as a woman to see these like well dressed men and then a, yeah. and then actually talk to them and they can't look. They have like Asperger's or they have yeah. some sort of they're on the spectrum or something or at least their nervousness makes them seem that way. Yeah. And so it's yeah. like sometimes when guys do this self betterment stuff, they're out of alignment. Like they've worked on their wardrobe, mm -hmm. they've got their wardrobe down, but they have no social skills still. And and right. the guys. Some of the guys, you know, presenting not tons of them, but a couple of them where that was their world, like giving this, you know, how to how to dress well. Like, this is all I know. And then once I'm taken out of this world of just talking about style, I don't know how I'll, I don't know how to talk about right. other things. Right, right, right. Well, it's, you know what? Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to I was going to ask um, one of the things we get asked all the time is about online da online dating. And I was wondering, what are the common mistakes men make with their dating profiles? Because that's the wave of the future now. That's how people are dating. Yeah, well, the most common mistake is being generic because there's so many guys. And, mm. and for women, you know, even if women aren't that good looking, they're still getting so many matches because yeah. they, they have a vagina. Right. So, so 
every guy is going at it the exact same way. They're doing a boring generic profile where they're saying what women want to hear. Like, mm-hmm. um, you know, I'm a well-rounded guy who likes to hike on the weekends and my mom <laughs> thinks I'm handsome. It's like, oh, my God, give me some coffee to keep me awake while I go through your profiles because they're right. so boring. Right. So right. Um, so. So guys have to do something to stand out. So I actually part of my business, um, which you can find at Kristen and chill dot com. It's like a play on Netflix and chill, which is really late. Uh-huh. But I make over guys dating profiles. Right. So I make them as unique and bold and short, concise uh-huh. as possible. Right. right. So, so the biggest mistake online is the genericness in both their presentation of their profile, but also in the messages that they're sending. Mm-hmm. So. The hey, how was your weekend? Hi. Hey, beautiful. Hey, a lot beautiful. of girls, a lot of guys do the hey, beautiful. And and I get in my DMs, you know, the same. If if someone slides into my DMs, for the most, if they don't know what I do, if they just maybe see me on a dating on the on the like a dating app or something, and I didn't mm-hmm. match with them, and they go to my DMs, it's the same thing. Hey, beautiful. Hey, beautiful. And I want to say. I, I, I don't want to be a jerk, but I just want to say, why on earth do you think that I would respond to this if I have, mm. not that I have a gajillion followers, but I have 10,000 yeah, followers. Yeah, but you, I mean, you have a all vagina. Have, so. All women have numerous, it, all their yeah. DMs are filled. Hey, beautiful. Filled. It, it, hey, beautiful. Filled. Hey, beautiful. Hey, beautiful. Even the girl with and, one tooth and an eye patch. Right. Somebody going, hey, beautiful. Yeah. Like, she gets hey, pretty. Oh, Maybe not hey, beautiful. <laughs> But well, I, I want to say, what is mentally wrong with you that you would think this would work? Why? I'm actually curious of the I think they're just scared, yo. That's scared. Yeah, well, that's, scared. that's what it is. The approach anxiety, Dre. You know what I mean? Like, we talk about that I all the time. I remember one time this girl had on some, like, she looked like she had on some khaki shit in her picture. I was like, you look like you work at CVS. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So if a guy slid into my DMs and said that. I'd be like, okay, hi. I may not instantly fall in love with you, but I would at least respond. It's an opening. It's an opening. Yeah. It's an opening. Yeah. And that's all you're and asking it, for is an opening. And it takes confidence to say something like that. He doesn't have the approach anxiety because he said something sarcastic to me. He, he took me down a peg. So yeah. I'm going to want to fight back to that and uh, go no, like, wait a second. You think you can bust my balls? Let me bust your balls. Right. And so right. it becomes you know, a reason to respond versus just another compliment that they're now going to put you in the pile of of garbage to the left of all the men who have also you know, said, hi, beautiful. I, I think possibly made, made it work is although every, all dudes, we had the same goal. We, we, we got gr- gross, we, we, we disgusting people. However, <laughs> I genuinely do want to have fun, too. So like when 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 the girls be like, oh, I want to go bowling, I fucking bowl, yo. I'm not there <laughs> for your ass right now, bitch. I need the strike. Like I'm trying to get it. <laughs> so, and I think because of that, I, I I I'll I'll just I wanna, do whatever. I would like to I would like to also submit to this. Andre's trying to have all the fun, <laughs> all the time, yeah, constantly. So it, it's like, it's like, it's That's like fair, if yeah. you if you not fun. I mean, John, John Andre has a girl now, but I mean, but it's it's you know, but even that, he's having all the fun For all real. the time at the risk of even. Losing, yeah, I mean, blowing this shit up, <laughs> like I, I, fuck, and and that and that the confidence of that, the fact that it's so interesting, and in people you find that people are they've dealt with so much trauma and so much insecurity and stuff. The fact that you don't care makes them care because they, well, I, 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 I mean, the pre- and and you find this about the prettiest girls are the most insecure. They're worried about everything. It's the it's the the chick that looks like a ma- mailbox in a dress. She's confident. She's, <laughs> I know you want some of this. <laughs> you like no, no. I, I mean, I guess. I'm a Chris Rock. When you saw, I got some good pussy under this gut. <laughs> And then they, they, you'll go, they'll go, uh, they'll go, you, they, sell, they say, I know you want some of this. So confident you go, I mean, wait a minute, do I? Maybe I do. Maybe I do want some of that. I didn't think so before, but now I'm in, you know. Um, it's an interesting, like, the, 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 
the congruency of that, though, women are so intuitive in terms of the incongruency. And I think because you're dating, you're, you're coaching, um, I think you kind of understand it on a more pragmatic level. But the reality, it's it's really just a vi it's a it's a visceral feeling that you have. So when you read the when you read the 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 the, the regular uh, profile, you're literally what you know. As comics, we go, Ugh, this is <laughs> this stinks, you know. And and that comes from. But even that is a vi a, a visceral reaction to what's going on, you know. Um, yeah. I think it's difficult to make it. To, 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 to understand it in a pragmatic way. Go ahead, Harry, what you were going to uh, say. I was going to say, from your own personal dating history, like how has becoming a dating coach affected your dating? Like even from negatively. the other end. Negative. Super negatively, because I'm, I'm micro dissecting mm. everything. I'm like, uh, you know, if, I mean, I, I've always been like that anyway, but it, for online dating, if a guy sends me like I matched with I, I'm not doing much dating, you know, I'm going through grief and loss and it's really hard to, you know, feel anything but but sadness right now. But mm. I'm trying to distract myself occasionally. And I've been opening up hinge and I matched with this guy who was like hot, like super hot. Mm. And he and I was just like crossing my fingers, like, please say, please say something interesting. Mm. Please say something different. Please say something different. And he said, hey, where do you live? Mm. And it's and, and I just I didn't unmatch him. I just never answered. Mm -hmm. And and so I don't know if I'd be like that if I did this, but I do this every single day. So my expectations are a lot higher. Well, um, let it's me like being a becoming a chef and then eating at a restaurant. Eating at McDonald's. Fact. Yeah, yeah. You're never going <laughs> to enjoy that shit the but same it's, way it's again. It's also like a comic. Exactly. And, you know, when you're a comic, you, you go, mm, you um, know, yeah, like, like there's a sense. You just know yeah. if someone gets it and if someone doesn't get it. You can't handle like uh, regular conversation. Like at a barbecue, I had I went to this barbecue and this kid was like the funny guy. No. But like yeah, square yeah, right, funny. that is. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and I was there with my girl, but we were enjoy. I mean, we were enjoying how bad it was, but it was still yeah. cringeworthy. <laughs> Like how funny he thought like, he what, was. You're like, what's today's <laughs> date? Hilarious. The 15th all day. And yeah. you're like, oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ, kill me. It's like being Roddy Piper where he has those they live glasses <laughs> where you can see all the aliens underneath. Yeah, like, it's, Ugh. yeah it's cringeworthy. But I, but he, here's something that I'm. um, And, and, I, and this is a, sometimes I have a problem with where I think women uh Women have this the, the difference. One of the basic difference in men, a man will have a, a woman like say if he has a few people that he's dating uh, casually. Right. Um, neither one of them has, you know, made his nature rise. Right. <laughs> made his nature rise. Who, <laughs> made a who was the one who said was that your dad? I who said I said. Yeah, I but that was like it. an old, uh, like it's from one old, of your uncles or something. Yeah, from the Great it's Depression. Probably, probably my uncle. Make your nature rise. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> he, um, but because of the fact that, like, you you'll have this this kind of rotation that you're going through. And then one day you can have a, a guy will have a revelation about somebody that they never saw attractively and, and just go, man, you know, this chick has always been ride or die. She's always been dope. She's always been down for me. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like her. Maybe Whereas, I should fuck Patricia. You, you <laughs> fuck <your face. laughs> she would appreciate it. <laughs> Pan Pan Trisha. <laughs> and but the uh but women very rarely do that. Like once you get categorized categorized in that oh you get stamped with that uh the you know with, zone or the, oh it's yeah. done. Or you gotta you got, go you, you gotta, gotta go rebuild. In, you gotta yeah, you gotta go to peace you gotta go to the peace corps dig some wells <laughs> in 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 Colombia or you could just go to jail right quick get right come out either or come yeah. home picture <laughs> Well, I mean, still yeah, right. still still I'm home, dude. I'm home. <laughs> I'm home. Yeah. Boy, you still uh, gotta. I, she's still gotta do the thing of like, hey, Kenny, it's Ken, it's Ken now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta oh, rebrand. Yeah. K dog, it's K dog. Yeah, <laughs> K dog, K born. My 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 sister married 
the dude, like she, he was like the friend zone dude who was chump. He was fat and he was always hanging around. He was like, hey, guys, I'm just going to hang out with you girls. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he, this is awesome, right? I, I just got my retainer on, but I can still talk good. And uh, <laughs> he, he, he went, he actually went to the Peace Corps when he came back, he, you know, because he wasn't eating. He was trim and fed. He was, you know, sandy hair and blue eye, gray eyes. And then Bang. See, Wait a minute, this nigga went to the Peace Corps and his eyes color changed? Well, then, well I don't think... What are you doing? Damn, that is good. I think he was so fat, Dre, that he was just... He was always look like oh, this. Oh, the salt was in his eyes? His eyes had high cholesterol? And he had fat... He had fat uh, overhead. He had a nigga fat had baking grease in his eyes. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> but he came back and, and she was like, oh, who's this? You will get this, though. You'll get... Where the, where the women she'll remember and then give you the test, give you the shit test. And if you pass the shit test, then you got a new, you got a, a whole new uh, uh, kind of breakdown. You, you have a you have a new yeah. opportunity to break down. But a guy will will take a, a, a chick who's just been ride or die and then go, hey, I um, it's because he's I, desperate. Isn't no, does that happen out of desperation no, when you see no, someone differently? No. Because I felt I mean, that way when I when I started liking that guy who was uh, totally not well, was not it doing it for me before. I mean, but let's be honest. I mean, you didn't you didn't feel like it was desperate. Well, there's, I was, there's a vitriol. I, I, I think I was lonely enough where I was willing to go. Okay, uh, what about you this said, guy? I, fuck it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, fuck it. I mean, I'm only getting uglier. <laughs> That's like, I'm only going to get uglier from here. I have to do something, you know. That was well, the yeah, but let's be honest. Saturday. Let's let's like, be uh -huh. honest. Women don't. Women do not fuck with a guy who should, who they don't want to fuck with. That they don't think no. is a woman will never. I would say a woman will never date a guy who she doesn't think is better than her. If she doesn't think he's better, now better is a relative term. You know, whatever she perceives is better. But in that moment, to give him the opportunity, you're going. He, so how you he, explain divorce court, Dante? What do you mean? That's when she decides that's relationships when she, on there because they she, both be bums together. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. She perceives him it as matter. a her bigger bum. Yeah. It doesn't matter her condition. She could be a bum. She could be a bum, Andre. He can't be a bum. It's like yeah. that's especially more reason that you can't be a bum because I'm busy being the bum. I need somebody else to bum help. So I could be a bum. Yeah, it, it's got to be both. Um. Uh, Kristen, can you are you uh, can you hang out for fifteen minutes before we do something behind the Patreon and, and quick? Yeah. But I, I want you to plug your plug everything you want to plug is social media and everything, and then we're gonna we're gonna go behind the paywall uh, the Patreon. Uh, so you guys, uh, if you want banter banter services, I'm the only one who really does this kind of stuff. You can go to kristenandchill.com. I banter one on one, uh, so we do private sessions with just me, uh, role playing as the chick you want to be talking to. Uh, you can hit me up on Instagram as well at Chris Karn, K R I S C A R N. And sometimes, you know, if you slide into my DMs, you guys can say, "Hey, beautiful," just to. <laughs> boost my self-esteem but to refer back to this episode and i'll get back to you with uh if you have any questions well about tell us you work like she, she work at cvs yeah either or <laughs> either or will work what up Kristen? cvs <laughs> or that's be me. andre that's where i'm gonna end up <laughs> or be handsome andre you stink andre uh <laughs> andre talk to me give me a your uh andre d thompson slouch theory that's it just google it you live no doubt no doubt uh harry uh, all my stuff at Harry Turjanian and uh, check out the Man School uh, Instagram. Check out Man School on TikTok and subscribe to the YouTube page. That's where we're releasing most of the visual content. Yeah, uh, me, everything, uh, Instagram, the Dante Nero. Don't forget my YouTube, all the social media, Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff is up. Um, and don't forget, if you need a one on one consultation, hit me up at uh, DanteNero.com. Click on consult. Uh, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. I love y'all, man. Um, we going behind the Patreon. Support us with the Patreon uh, so we can keep doing this thing. You know what I mean? Um, if you if you like, I get I get messages all the time. You saved my life. You changed my life. Take care of me, y'all. Take care of me. Uh, we are out. Man School 202 is created by Dante Nero, hosted by 
Dante Nero with Harry Turjanian and Andre D. Thompson. Produced by Harry Turjanian. Executive producers Matt Kleinschmidt, Harry Turjanian, and Dante Nero.